Hello beer tubers and welcome to the Master of Hobbits Top 10 Best Beers of 2019. We had a damn great year uh, in 2019. So many great beers. As you might hear, my voice is a little deeper, a little bit lower. I've been a little bit over under the weather. I got sick like just before New Year's, just uh, like during my, uh, what's it called, the uh, Christmas break, which is typical, but uh, that's why it's been a bit silent on the channel, but I'm better now, so I'm here to bring you guys the best beers I had this year. Uh, as I said, this was a quite crazy year. We did a little bit more trading, and also just like buying beer through friends uh, in different countries. Well, mainly the States. Uh, and I think, actually, this year was better. Uh, it was probably a, around the same as with 2018, because 2018 was also so crazy because I got to go back to the States. Uh, and travel around there. Also, another thing that's crazy, this embarks the 10th year of the Master of Puppets Beer Reviews. I started my channel in December of 2009. So we're doing 10 years now. It's uh, it's the 10th year, which is fucking crazy. Uh, it's a long time to do a hobby, but I, you know, I and still enjoy it and getting like all the feedback from you guys. I know I'm really bad at commenting, uh, replying to comments, but when you start getting more and more comments, especially like on old videos and stuff like that, it gets really hard to keep up, especially when you know, back then when I started the channel and everything, I was a student, I had so much time on my hands, but then you get a full-time job and everything and you know, life gets busy, that's just how it is. But I read everything I get, every, every comment I get and I'm really appreciated, appreciative, isn't that what it's called? Not appreciated, appreciative all the feedback it's always great so uh, it also seems like you guys really love the christmas calendar that was fun <laughs> to shoot everything in one day uh, so yeah 2019 was great besides that we also got to travel a lot which was awesome uh, a lot of germany trips but the big thing i mean in 2020 is going to be that japan trip that's going to be so exciting i think I'll, I'll mainly do food stuff on that trip i'll try to find some beverage things to do but you know i've done food once in a while on the channel mainly cooking myself but I mean, I have to film some food stuff in Japan. I know a lot of you guys are foodies as well, so. Uh, but before we get into the top beers, as always, this was really freaking hard to pick because there's so many great beers I got to try in 2019. Um, so uh, I have a list of runner-ups and this year's list of runner-ups, the beers got at least a 97 or 96. Actually, some I, in hindsight, I would bump up to a a higher grade and on the top 10 it's only uh like one brewery can only be entered once so there's actually a brewery on the honorable mentions that i'm going to mention first which could have been on the list but the other beer from them i preferred more but that's trilliums um headroom and max headroom actually two beers those were crazy triple ipa so they get a, a, to be on the honorable mentions list, because there's a better Trillium beer on the list, at least from what I thought. But here we go with the other one. So we've got Prairie's Vanilla Noir. We've got Mickler San Diego Brunch on Brunch. We've got Cancion Fofoon from 2018. Cycle Rare Dose 1. Omnipoyo and Dugas Cola Perpetual, which was this crazy barrel aged project, which was like a uh, version of, oh, was it... Um, what's it called, the anagram? Aged in anagram bourbon barrels or something. It took like two years to actually get everything done because they had to do like a spirit based of the beer and age it in barrels and reuse those barrels and craziness. It was, yeah, and then the spirit was in barrels that had the beer. It was <laughs> very meta. Uh, then we got Toppling Goliath, Fire Skulls and Money. That was an insanely good IPA. I actually think that was better than like King Su. That was the best, so far the best toppling IPA I've had, but I'm also just a sucker for Nelson Hops. Um, then we've got Michaela, Michaela Bauhaun Pantau, which was their peach sour, which was, is that donut peaches, I think they're called? Amazing, amazing stuff. Then we've got uh, Cigar City Marshall Sukov's Florida Style Imperial Style, which was barrel aged pastrified Marshall Sukov, which was actually really good. Then we got the Actually, I think the first time I ever have an Icelandic beer on this, this list, it's a collab between Malbuk and Kex in Iceland and also Cycle from the States. And it was their brew, ha ha ha, which was crazy good. It was like such an underrated, in my mind, European pastry stout. It was, and barrel age one that was amazing. 
Then we've got a Crazy Sour from Omnipoyo, this Omnipoyo Bianca Blueberry Maple Pancake Lassie Goza, which was nuts. Fremont Coconut Bee Balm, that was delicious. Goose Island Bourbon County brand Vanilla Stout, the new one. I can't remember what vintage it was actually, but that was a great beer to revisit. And then Cycles Road Trip 2018, don't know what I'm gonna do. Uh, Ama Michaela White Labs, Big Bold and Beautiful, the big barrel aging project from Ama Michaela and White Labs where they did a old ale that was aged in numerous different barrels and they used different yeast and wanted to make it like a really strong beer. That was awesome. Uh, and then Three Fontaines Hommage uh, Bio Frambosen Oak Edition. So the Oak Edition, blend number 54. That was awesome. And another one, the Intense Rot, blend number 85. Those were like probably the best Three Fontaines Lambics and some of the best fruit Lambic I had um, last year. Then Transient, their Kentucky, insanely good breakfast stout in bourbon barrels that I also think is very underappreciated. I think in general Transient makes amazing stout. And then lastly, Hoppin' Frog's Rocky Mountain Barrel Age Taurus. That was just fucking crazy good and old school. Old school, intense imperial stout. So that was the runner-ups. Uh, here's to a great 2020. I hope you guys will try some amazing beers. Thanks a ton to everyone for watching and subscribing over the year. Uh, we're probably gonna hit 10,000 subscribers this year, which is awesome, so another milestone. And as for the 10th anniversary, we'll get into that. We're gonna be doing something, maybe some collabs with some breweries. I have something planned, so I will inform you guys properly in a full video about that. But here's to 2020, here's to 10, 10 years, the 10th year of Master of Puppets. And we're also gonna hit Beer Review 3000. 10 years, Beer Review 3000. Shit, a lot of stuff going on at once. Uh, and I'm turning 30, shit. <laughs> I just turned 30 next week. It's crazy, so here goes guys. Thanks for a great year. Stick around for another one and here we go. Top 10 best beers of the Master of Hoppets in 2019. Cheers. Oh, that is so balanced. It's got a definitely more roast profile on the flavor than I expected from the aroma. But big, oh, the aftertaste of bourbon character is really nice. Yeah. Super nice, lingering, oaky, sweet, fudgy vanilla bourbon character. Mm. But it's, you wow. can definitely and sense that this beer has had some time to really mill together oh, yeah. and become very harmonious. It's one of those kind of like beers I think that's very good for aging, it seems like, but at least for this bottle here, mm. because I can imagine those flavors, especially the roast character, will be really bold and fresh. Yeah. It's so creamy and lush. Yeah, and super creamy, lush, yeah. full mouthfeel. As I said, kind of similar bourbon character to Bourbon County. It's that yeah. sweet, fudgy character. Uh, and then there's like the tobacco notes, they're definitely like nice mm -hmm. roasted malt, coffee, uh, dark roast. It's like all those kind of like dark roasty profiles, also like some licorice, uh, with that sweet pipe of like charred oak as well. Yeah, charred oak. And definitely. vanilla. Mmm. Oh, oh wow. Much more vanilla on the taste. <laughs> My god, this is good. Fuck that is. Yeah. The fucking licious. Oh, yeah. It is. It it oh, but it, it definitely has Bourbon County vibes yeah, in terms it does. of barrel character. But it's just more towards the sweeter side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's still so balanced. Yeah. The bourbon barrel is just perfect. Yeah. In, yeah. yeah. It it cuts like at the perfect time. Yeah. And it brings forth like bourbony vanilla on top of like real Madagascar vanilla bean flavor. But just imagine how popping the vanilla would be in on this one. It was dead fresh. Yeah. It must oh. be really crazy intense. Also, it's so smooth. It's not thick, no. but it's so smooth. It's, it's like really velvety. Yeah. yeah. Perfect for this kind of beer. Yeah. Actually, that's much similar to Bourbon Town. Yeah. The, the yeah, because that's also not like really yeah. thick. It's like velvety. Oh, that is really good. Wow, it packs a punch of flavor. Oh, this is really, really good. That is really fucking good. Uh, it really reminds me of us having bourbon county and now, the other day. And now the vanilla comes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think the vanilla, it's like, it's a mix of like that fudgy bourbon vanilla mm -hmm. and real vanilla bean. 
If we compare it to fundamental observation, I think fundamental observation is more of the <coughs> frosting, mm. vanilla kind of thing. This is more like crazy barrel with vanilla. I think yeah. this is more chocolatey and mm. caramely and into that brown sugar kind of mm -hmm. thing. But you can really feel they pull a lot of booze yeah. and a lot of bourbon from the barrel. It's yeah. still thick, but it's thinned it out just a little bit and given it some dryness and spirit. Mm. To make it kind of actually drinkable yeah. for 14.4% beer. But it's it's when really you sick. It, after you, you, it tastes like you had a glass of bourbon in yeah. the aftertaste. Yeah. It comes like this. this yeah. It just wafts with yeah. and like super chocolatey mm. aftertaste. It's so chocolatey. Like really rich chocolate bourbon mm. aftertaste. And it leaves the chocolate thing. filled bitter chocolate. Yeah. Uh, bourbon filled bitter chocolate. Yeah. It's awesome that it has so much bourbon character, but you don't feel like the, the body has suffered from mm -hmm. it at all. These little it's still chocolate so bottles. Are super oily. oily. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that is great. Yeah. Wow. That is, the coffee really shines on the flavor. I love that. The cinnamon is really Ooh, yeah. huge, but the coffee is definitely there. Yeah, it definitely kicks in. The thing about these, like the like Kentuckys, is just like Chris has a vibe for just barrel, barrel and beer, mm. barrel aging beer. The barrel character on the beers are just insane. It's yeah. so fudgy bourbon like. It's saturated. It's really mm. like caramely fudgy bourbon like intenseness, mm. especially up front. But it actually keeps on for a bit. It kind of combines everything. Yeah, it does. And it's, yeah, as you said, like we talk about this candy bourbon flavor, it really yeah. is that candy bourbon whiskey flavor. Yeah. Uh, warmth going down, it's 14.5. And it's cinnamon. And cinnamon. Yeah. Uh, but wow, what a huge cinnamon flavor. Yeah. Uh, Smuckly that we had was a lot sweeter than this. Mm. This, it's almost like the cinnamon in this balances it out a bit. Um, but yeah, it's yeah, so nice it's, to have that spiciness, almost like as you say, rye mm -hmm. type. Flavor to, to cut the sweetness is just such a great uh, balance. Mm. Oh. <laughs> this oh. is just as good as the, the Ghost Hawk Scratch. Exactly. It's exactly yeah. the same. It's that wow super feeling. thick, yeah. chewy, but it's a bit more fruity. <laughs> yeah, it's Isn't a bit. It's, yeah, but I think that's the right. coffee. Maybe. I think it's the Gesha coffee. Yeah. Maybe. It is so it's delicate. Long. Gesha is known for being a bit fruity. This is so balanced, yeah. yeah. Mm. Everything plays together so well, nothing overpowers the mm. other one. And this is the beer we're starting this year. Yeah. Holy fuck. Not, not too roasty, not too sweet. No. You know, mm. just... It is it is a bit sweet, but... It's not too much. No, it, no. Has it has like the umami, yeah, an umami to play yeah. against the sweetness. Oh my like god, this is good. Really fudgy chocolate. This kind of reminds me almost like... Uh, of an angry chair beer as well. Yeah, because it has like that. It has that heavy, so pastry, yeah, yeah. heavy pastry, heavy pastry But not but so. A, I think the, the the three sons we had at my place actually uh, that was more umami. Uh, this chair. has not so much mm. umami. Mm. You mean angry chair? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Angry <laughs> chair. Sorry. That was angry chair. Yeah. Oh, that it's got like a rich Nutella hazelnut flavor yeah. we got from Ghost Hawk. Then mm. paired with a really fruity coffee vibe. Mm. And like probably almost vanilla too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that it's it, I think more maybe not milkshake flavor. It's like dense chocolate cake. Yeah, yeah, really dense chocolate cake, like brownies. But it smells Brownie more milk. like yeah milkshake, whereas the taste is more a bit more robust. Mm -hmm. I think. Hmm. Oh, oh that's, that's fucking amazing. Uh, <laughs> some salty wow. notes to begin with. Super umami bomb as well. Like yeah, yeah. yeah. Huge umami bomb up front, and that just amazing barrel character. Yeah. What a fucking great barrel character. Yeah. The spice, like the rye whiskey just fucking and, sings on this. And the mouthfeel wow. is really, really great. And this is it has some kind of unique aftertaste or something. I think that's like, almost like licorice mm. It reminds me of like, actually of, of bee balm a little bit, just done even better. This and is more umami. Heat going, yeah, definitely heat going down. It's almost like soy sauce. How many percent? Maybe? I think it's 15. crazily 15. drinkable for 15%. It tastes mm -hmm. awesome. Sweet. Yeah, it's so oh, leathery, tasty. fudgy, vanilla. But leathery, it has some caramel. leathery yeah. aftertaste. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Tobacco. Tobacco, mm. pipe tobacco. Almost like it's got that like super deep bourbon county as barrel character. Maybe even deeper, I think. Mm. And then like this the maple syrup barrel lends like this slight maple-y, bourbon-y mm. sweetness. And then you have like this loads of vanilla-y spicy rye from the from the rye whiskey barrel. 
we had like it reminds me of, well I have had Rittenhouse before and yeah it's, it's but it's there. super umami yeah. super salty but that's a uh, classic signature of sauce. Evil Twin I yeah think. but perfectly balanced yeah, it's per really by, balanced. by sweetness from yeah. barrel yeah Holy fuck! <laughs> oh, that it's, is um, so good! And I have four more cans yeah. to drink. It's juicy. It's really, really juicy. It's like it's a so perfect temperature. Yeah, like perfect temperature. Oh, it's it's so not straight juicy. from the um, refrigerator. It's maybe it is a 20 minutes out or something. Yeah. But yeah, a juicy like a mixed multi juice, you know, breakfast juice. Um, the mouthfeel on the beer as well. Yeah. It's so pillowy and soft. And just creamy and coating, such a great mouthfeel. The melon, like especially on the first sip, I get this huge amount of of the sweet honeydew melon and, and caramel yeah. melon flavors. Um, I really get a lot of that, it's, which is awesome because I've heard that that can be a difficult flavor to pull out of Galaxy sometimes. But you're definitely getting that. It's definitely got the mango stuff going on as well, which I guess is, can come from Osaka. Maybe the spice and hint, hint of da dampness from Mosaic and that kind of blueberry edge, but huge. Melon character, and then well, again mangoes, papaya, like these so sweet, kind of sweet tropical yeah. fruit. <laughs> Fuck, that is dense fruit juice. Wow, it just keeps going. Yeah, it keeps going. It is fuck. I I, I could easily drink a can of yeah. this on my own. You'd just be yeah. so fucking smashed, though. Yeah. I have a hard time, like, wrapping my head around this. It's like, it's just... Yeah. <laughs> uh, first of all, oh my God. no this is crazy. trace of alcohol. Mm. Like, 10%. I, I can kind of feel it when I know it, but if yeah, I didn't yeah. know it, I would have just... Think it's a double IPA. Yeah. yeah. Like it, maybe 9% double IPA, 8.5. Eight, eight, yeah. yeah. And yeah. the mouthfeel is so yeah, thick. So creamy and it's so it's like a fucking milk stout with lactose. Yeah, yeah. Like seriously, yeah. fucking imperial milk stout mouthfeel yeah. or something like that. It's crazy. It's as it's as fluffy as milk stout. Mm. Like because lactose at least yeah. gives that like super fluffy lightness and it has that like that airy, light, fluffy mouthfeel. Yeah. Like marshmallow almost, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Mm. Oh, fuck, dude. That is insane. That is like you crossbred a sour with a red wine. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Like a fruited blackcurrant sour with like a really deep flavor of red wine. Yeah, and such amazing wow. tannins that just, it doesn't pinch you like the, like the regular wines does, but it really, really has some characters. What an amazing oak character! Like this, like super old woody flavor. Yeah. Like yeah. super old oaky. Like almost smells like when you're in like a barrel room in, in, in a brewery or yeah. like some like a vineyard or whatever. Like this, like super intense oaky aroma with huge tannins as well. Like loads of tannins. How is this possible? And it's super drinkable as well. I yeah. think it's a perfect temperature too. Like yeah. Just lightly chilled. How is this 11 percent? You don't feel yeah. that at all. But you do kind of sense it in the terms of a strong beer because the yeah. mouthfeel is quite thick actually yeah. for a sour, but otherwise it's no booze. Wow. Huge red wine character as well. Like that that like intense, super deep and rich black or red red great character is there. Like the really black currants also play in with pro, it for pro, sure. Provide like a lesser more sessionable. Yes, it provides some uh, drinkability. If you yeah, yeah. Because it. it's got that like that super sour blackcurrant flavor that is very familiar in Scandinavia with yeah. summer and everything. And it's like it's Ribena like, which is yeah. a mixed soft drink we have here. Uh, it's it's got those kind of like jammy Ribena flavors. Also like that jammy fresh fruit. I'm almost getting like leather and tobacco notes. Yeah, as well. It's yeah. almost like got like flavor profiles you associate like with heavy dark beers. Exactly. I'm really into this. Like you also do in red wines. Yeah, like exactly. That's why it's like, this is one of the things that I've had that's closer to like really complex red wine in the real world. Like, give this to a wine drinker, I think they would really enjoy it. Oh! oh, 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 oh. Holy shit! Holy shit, Batman! That smells good. Fuck, this is straight fucking bourbon barrel it aged Nutella. A lot like this is horse. fucking, it smells like a more intense version of proper dose. Yeah, it does. Band, but with barrel character. 
Fuck me. Oh, oh shit. shit! This has more umami than holy than the, fuck balls. The one. Yeah. Are you shitting me? I was thinking Horus is the king of this kind of beer with hazelnuts, but this is awesome. This is it. It reminds me of having proper nose or uh, having Ghost Hawk, but barrel aged and even yeah. thicker. This Are you fantastic. fucking me? The fantastic base though. Mm -hmm. I bet you this is the. Uh, I don't, I think this is for well, super Angry Chair is crazy. Fuck, oh, man. It's just like fucking bourbon barrel aged brownies with a hazelnut spread, like fucking Nutella brownies with bourbon and fucking My like God, deep rich espresso good. coffee and vanilla. This is pretty much a perfect barrel aged pastry style. Is, is. This is, if you want to try crazy pastry style, this is pretty much it. I agree. I totally agree. I wouldn't change a bit about this beer. Check out Special Socks, definitely trade for it, this is amazing. If you love big ass, fudgy, cakey, chocolatey, hazelnutty, coffee, vanilla -y, barrel aged goodness, drink it, get it, trade for it. As Thanks, always, Michael from Houston. Thanks Again. a ton, brother. Thanks a ton. So, as always, guys, remember to comment, subscribe, share the Facebook fan page, and Twitter, and Instagram, and see the thumbs up if you enjoyed it. But we're going to say cheers in the fucking delicious Facebook down. See you guys in the next video.